Welcome back to our workshop. This is the second part of a two-part series on repairing two chairs. This one's already been repaired, and this pile of wood here represents what's going to be a chair like this. Well, sort of. There was a puppy dog that really enjoyed this chair, and there's half of a stretcher missing, and another whole stretcher that's missing as well. So I've got some parts I've turned on the lathe that are going into this chair. And I'm going to show you, really focus on assembling a chair like this. There are a couple of damaged parts. I've got a split. I'm going to show you how to use a syringe to insert glue into a crack and deal with that. And I've got a new dark glue that I'm testing. And there's also a couple of wedge tenons that hold on a back. I'll show you how those go together as well. So stick with me. I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. I'll start by taking you back when I disassembled the chair so you can understand how I got to this pile of wood. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Someone was eager to play. Wow, look at all that damage. The puppy just chewed that right off. And here's another part that's still on. Look at all that wood that's missing. And the middle stretcher, it's gone. So I've turned three more pieces for this. We'll get it back in working order. I've got one joint here that I need to take apart and it's not coming. So what I'm going to do is just add some vinegar to the joint. Let it sit for about five minutes and hopefully that'll free it up. Okay, so this has had some vinegar in it. I've got it in the vise here. Give it a bit of a twist and see how this works. There we go. The magic of white vinegar. The only part I'm leaving together is this back stretcher here. It's locked in tight, which is perfect. On this arm, there's a split on both sides where this dowel goes in. Put this in here you can see it open up so i'm going to try the type one dark glue and i'm going to use a syringe to get the glue in there so i'm just going to stick the syringe in here suck up a bit of glue and that's going to be messy so i'll wipe that off and then i put a blunt tip on this Close this up so I don't spill it. And then I can get to work. I'll put a clamp on here and then that'll allow me to prop it up. It'll just be easier to work on. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the screwdriver to lever the crack open like this. And then what I'm gonna do is squeeze that syringe. I'll put it right here on the end. And you can see how that glue comes out. So that allows me to get deep into the crack and go all the way down one side and then the other. So this way I'm getting a lot of glue coverage in, in that crack. And when it dries, it's gonna be really strong. You can actually see some of the old paint that used to be on this chair in a bit of that crack. So this is not new by any means. I can put a clamp on it and you'll see lots of squeeze out. There. So it just shows you how much glue you can get into a crack like that if you're using a syringe. It's really handy. Please give us a thumbs up so more people will see our videos. The glue's dried now, so I'll take the clamp off here and we'll take a look at how that dark glue has hidden the seam here. So let me zoom in, refocus, let me refocus this. And you barely tell where that crack was. Now it was an older crack, so there's a bit of wear there. 
but with traditional PVA glue, you typically see just a very fine straight line across that. On this side, you can't even tell. So that looks like success to me. I like this dark glue. I just wish it was a little easier to find. It's uh, difficult to source. This chair right now is all ready for the glue up and assembly, but I want to take you back into some previous videos so you can understand the steps I took before I got to this point. I turned new stretchers for this chair and a key part of turning is making sure you've got really sharp tools. In the previous video, I showed some beginner wood turning tips and a good guide to get you started if you've never done this before. I find wood turning is a little bit of science and a little bit of art. The science part is the measurements and making sure you get them right to reproduce the parts. The art is making sure your piece looks really appealing to the eye. Once I sanded everything down, it was time to drill them and drill them at the right angle. You can see the details of this in the previous video. Just fine tune it with sandpaper. And then give it a test. Yep, nice tight joint. So where do you start with a glue up like this? Well, on a normal chair, what I do is I assemble the back first and then I assemble the legs. But because I'm dealing with arms here, I don't want to be putting pressure on these when I'm working on the legs. So I'm going to start with the legs first. So I'll clear this stuff out of the way, put some padding down, and we'll get the legs ready to go on the seat. This is the seat right side up, with the back virtually down here. This is the way I took the chair apart. And the reason that's important is because when I took it apart, I labeled the parts. So this is the back left leg, this is the back right leg. This piece was intact, so this is all easy to understand where that goes. So the next thing I do is, this is my front right, I orient these parts so I know where they're going to go. Because once I start getting the glue moving, I want to keep moving as quickly as possible. Here are the new turn parts, and I've test fit these and labeled them. So here you can see, this is on the left side here. And this one is on the right, so that's going over here. And then this is the cross stretcher, and I've labeled this on the left side here. So all the parts are ready to go. Now, when you're dealing with parts uh, like this, you need to make sure they're free of any glue and residue. So you've got them nice and clean, and that means you're gonna have a good glue bond. Cleaning out, as you saw before, these pockets here, uh, make sure that that glue is going to last a long, long time. So my trick is, I'm working in a cool shop, I keep my glue in my back pocket. I'm using liquid hide glue, and there's two brands in the market. This is a tight bond, and this is old brown. So either of them are pre-made. Uh, you can also cook up your own glue if you want to go through that, but uh, that's something that I don't really have an interest in doing. So the pre-made stuff works fine for me. The other thing I did, and I'll show you up close, is this leg was really loose. I think it was probably in there a long time moving around. So I widened the tenon by gluing on a shaving around it with PVA glue, and then working it down to that size. So there were two shaving widths I needed to get on there. And you can see I've cut it around here to fit where the mortise is. And in some cases it's a little bit thinner, uh, that was just working it down to the right width so it will fill up the void within the mortise. So with that, we're all set to go. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips and more. Now back to fixing furniture. So let's start a glue up. The place I'm going to start is with the mortises. So just squeezing some glue in here and working it around. Now, I do have to move quickly to make sure that the glue doesn't set up before I get done here. So, I'll just get this out of the way, quickly do this. This is why I usually speed up the video, because once I start this process, I can't really stop and move the camera. So once the mortises are done, and I've got a coating of glue on all the surfaces in there, 
you want to maximize this. You don't want to just squirt it in there and hope for the best because that is a recipe for disaster. Now before I put the legs in, I'm also going to put glue in the mortises on the legs. It's just much easier to do it when they're lying flat here. So that one's all ready to go. And then we'll put glue on the tenon. So you can see here I'm using both ends of this artist brush. It's got two different purposes. One is to put glue on the tenon and the other one is in the mortise. Getting a, a glue in a mortise that big isn't difficult with a brush, but when you get down to these 5 8 ones, it's very difficult with a brush this size. Okay, so that's set. I'm going to set that in here. And one tip for you, if you're working out of a glue bottle like this, don't stand it up all the time. Leave it on its side because that allows you to quickly get glue out of the bottle. So the next one here see if I do that it's all going to want to settle to the bottom of the container. And this one here Now, glue like this, this is um, hide glue, and I explain this a lot in videos if you haven't heard this before. Hide glue is a glue that you can reverse. Um, you can reverse it with heat. You can also reverse it uh, with vinegar, which is my preferred method. I've got a constant supply of vinegar here in a syringe that I use to disassemble furniture. I prefer that over the heat because sometimes you can char the furniture and the finish if you're not careful. Okay, so these are in the right spots. And I've got glue in all the mortises. There is a mortise in each of these, so I'm going to put glue in those. And then glue on the tenons. Okay, so this is the right side here. Get that roughly in shape. Now, if you're not familiar with the different types of glues used in woodworking, you can see my bench back here is lined with them. I use, let's just see while I'm doing this if I can give you the rundown, um, CA glue, commonly known as crazy glue, uh, does have some purposes in the shop. Um, it's a relatively new one for me. Uh, then there's polyurethane glue, which is used for outdoors. And then liquid hide glue, and I've shown you two of them here. I've got a fish glue, which is fantastic for an open time. Uh, normal glue is you know, 15 to 20 minutes of doing a glue up. Uh, fish glue, you can get up to 90 minutes for a glue up. So if you've got a really complex glue up like a Windsor chair, it's a great glue for that. Um, the new one you've seen me in this video use is the Titebond Dark. So good for furniture repairs where have got dark wood, seems to be working well. And then I've got two PVA glues. I've got an Elmer's and a Lee Valley cabinet maker's glue. 
the Lee Valley cabinet makers glue is my go-to glue. Um, really happy with how that works. Um, it cleans up well if I've got squeeze out to deal with. It can be difficult to buy though because Lee Valley doesn't ship it if it is susceptible to freezing weather conditions. So if you're not near a store, you can only get it shipped to you seasonally. Okay, so I've got everything in position here. I'm going to close the glue bottle. Next step is to take a mallet and just seat each of these legs. And you can actually, once you're used to this, feel it and hear it. And getting it seated. Okay, so those are in there. That will do. The trick in glue ups of chairs is making sure that when you glue them up, see I've got a, a rocking here, you want to glue them up with some weight. So I'm actually going to turn this around because the next part I want to work on is putting the back on. So I've got a couple cinder blocks here that I use. Okay, so you notice it's not rocking now. So this is what you're looking for. You need to have a, a level workbench and get it placed like this and then clamp it. And that way you don't have to do the extra work of leveling the chair after the glue's dried. And you see me use quick grip, these trigger clamps a lot. Because of the padding on them, you can clamp things like you can't utter clamps. So there's a severe angle on here. It's not square, but these allow me to clamp like that and not have to put clamping locks on. So I'll put one more on here. Okay, so that's good. The base is now done. The last thing I want to do is just grab my water. So I keep a container of water here in the shop. Rag. And I'm going to wipe up the glue that's that squeezed out. Now, don't be afraid to apply a generous amount of glue to your joints. Squeeze out is actually a good thing, not a bad thing. You just need to clean it up while it's still wet. Now, high glue is forgiving. If it ends up drying and it's on there afterwards, you can just take some warm water and wash it off. So, no concerns there. But if you grab it when it's wet, it just saves a little bit of scrubbing. And the nice thing about high glue too is it, it sands very easily off of a surface. So if you do have some that accidentally drips somewhere, it's not a big deal. Okay, one more corner over here. We're all good to go. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the top, and I'll teach you about a wedge tenon. So I don't have any wet glue here that I'm working with, so I can take my time. 
let me just walk you through what a wedge tenon is all about. This is the tenon that holds the back of the chair together. It's called a wedge tenon. And the reason is a wedge goes in the end here and as the wedge is driven in, it widens the bottom of the tenon. And let me show you why that's important. This is where the tenon is installed and it goes right through the chair. So when it goes down to the bottom and the wedge is driven in, the bottom is fatter than the top. And what that does is it holds the back from wanting to come out. Now the wedge is put in a way that it's pr pushing pressure on the end grain this way and this way. Um, if it were installed the opposite way, which it never would be, it would actually be splitting the seat. So a wedge tenon, when you're taking these apart, what you need to do is recognize where that wedge is, drill out the wedge, and that will loosen the tenon, and then you can drive it out. So this chair has three pieces. There's the center back, and I actually noticed when I took this apart, these decorative elements here were facing out the back, which was wrong. So this has come apart before because they're supposed to be in the front. So I need to make sure that this is put in correctly this time. So I'm just going to put a light coating of glue here because I don't want a ton of squeeze out at the back of this chair. And a light coating here. These are not critical parts for strength. You just want them glued up enough that they're not going to rattle. So I prefer putting a little bit heavier coat in the mortise and go light on the tenon just to avoid some of that cleanup. So load up three slots here. Okay, and I've got that bottom one there. Now I'll do a little bit on the top. Again, you don't want a ton of glue here. Just enough to hold it in place. Okay, so the decorative part, I need to go on the front of the chair. So this goes in just like this. Get that seated properly in there. Okay. The next two, I have labeled one of them when I took it out. So this is right. So it's over here. So again, just a little light coating here. Really on the top here is just a dab and then spread it around. Okay, so right, it goes this way. And then this one I just need to align with the opposite design, and we're good. I have to admit, I have put on, put on the back part of a chair wrong once, but fortunately, it was being covered with upholstery and it was just a slight concave convex mix up there. So it wasn't material at the end of the day. Okay, so this goes in here. And this one is a lot more snug than the other one. Okay, so this is ready to go. The next part is loading up a bunch of glue on the length of this. So I can put it inside this mortise and get it all the way around. 
it's really important to get glue on all surfaces all the way down this mortise. It's really long. That's about a two inch seat. But if you make the mistake of only getting glue on, say, 25%, then you're really missing on out on a lot of holding power. So take the time to make sure you got enough glue there. And in my opinion, I think a lot of the failure is just not using the right tool for the job. You can see how well this works, just the back of this artist brush, getting it in there. Okay, so now I'm ready for the back. And the back was loose. The crest rail here came apart very easily actually. And there was a gap which led me to having to take this apart to fix the problem. So this is just a smaller mortise. Get that glue all the way around there. Now end grain doesn't have a lot of strength to it. So some people don't add glue to the end grain, but I do because what I've noticed is it doesn't have a lot of holding strength, but it prevents these parts from twisting. And uh, when you're working on a back here that's flexing, that twisting action can really loosen things up. So I add a little bit of glue just to help prevent that twisting. And it's not a ton of glue, just a little tiny bit. There might not even be any squeeze out when I get that put together. Oh, another tip for you. When you're working with this artist brush, don't set it down on your workbench. It'll pick up dust like you wouldn't believe. So I lay it just on the corner of my bench so the tip and the brush are not touching the bench. Okay, so the last part to glue here are these tenons. Now, you don't want a ton of glue on the tenons. I loaded up the mortise really well. If you put a ton of glue on the tenons, you're gonna end up with a lot of squeeze out at the top. So you just want to make them wet with glue. You don't need any uh, mass of or ribs of glue on there. Let me just check the underside to make sure I've got it all. Yeah, had a dry spot there. Okay, so we're all set to go now. Oh, no, I missed a spot. Haha. -ha. Right here, opportunity for glue. So I'll just put a little bit in these mortises. Okay, now we're ready to go. So we'll start one here, line the other one up here, and I'm not going to push them in yet. Now I'm going to lay it back and line up these parts as I start to work the back together.
Okay, so all the parts are in. Now what I'm going to do is take a long clamp. And get this right at the top of the crest. And clamp it down. So I don't know if you saw, there was a bit of a, a seating action there that happened. Okay. Now, you do have to be careful when you're doing this because this clamp will want to fall forward if you put extra tension on there. So what I'd recommend is just grab another clamp. And put it on here. Just enough that it's acting as a safety that this isn't going to come down and hurt you. Okay, so I'm going to close that glue bottle for now. Now we've got the two wedges. Now I like watching videos on chair makers and the best one I've seen is Curtis Buchanan. And Curtis makes Windsor chairs and he suggests for a tenon or for a wedge to only glue one side. His theory is the other side is free to move with seasonal wood movement. And I don't know how true that is, but he's made a lot of chairs. So I'll trust him. Okay, so I was just able to push this in. So what I'm going to do is hold this down, get it seated as much as possible, put the wedge in, and then tap it home with my mallet. So I'll do it on this one side first, and then I'll get a close-up over here so you can see how it's done. The key is to hold the force down here so that stays in the chair as you're tapping this in. And I don't know if you noticed, but there was a difference in sound there. As you're driving it in and you're actually getting that wedge all the way in, there is a sound change. So you can tell when it's fully in. So this is where I'm going to switch to hammering with my left hand. So here what I want to do is push that down. You can see how that moved. Push it down so it's seated in. Here I've got glue on one half only. Slide that in. And then tap it home. And you can see the squeeze out happening there. That's tightened up. I just need to clean that up and we're good to go. Because of the pressure on the back, the crest rail joint here has opened up. So all I need to do is add a clamp to it. And fortunately there's a spot here that I can do that and that closes it up so it'll bond really well. The glue is now dried. I didn't want to put these arms on here while I had this clamped up. So I wanted to do that in two separate stages. So I'll take the clamps off. And the next thing I'm going to do is stain the bottom stretchers here. So if you notice, the stretchers are different colors of um, walnut and I need to be careful in how I stain them because they're, some of them need to be darker than others. So I'll get these clamps out of the way and we can take a closer look. Now the two outside stretchers are a lighter wood than the interior stretcher and on the other chair all the wood was this color. What I found was when I put on this chestnut stain that I needed to put it on and then immediately wipe it off. Otherwise it got too dark. On these ones here, I'm going to put it on the end pieces first and then come back, do this middle one, wipe it off and then wipe the other ones off. And that'll make these outside ones a little bit darker because they are a lighter wood. Walnut has a lot of variation to it. And so you will end up, when you're dealing with walnut, having these lighter and darker colors. The lighter color is sapwood, 
the darker color is the heartwood. You can see how that stain goes on really nicely. It really gives it a warm look. You might wonder why I don't put the stain on at the start before I assemble this. Uh, the stain can play with the glue and I don't want that stain compromising the glue. The glue is the most important part of getting a chair like this back together again. So I stain it afterwards. The puppy started to dig into this leg in the chair so what I did is sanded it down to get rid of a lot of those marks. So I'm just going to apply the same stain I put on the stretchers and see how that works out for matching the rest of the leg. Looks like it's going to match pretty well. I think that'll work. So the stain on here, it's looking good. The legs here are looking a bit white though. It's almost like drywall dust got wet and has stayed on here, stuck to the finish. So I'll need to clean that down and I'll put a coat of wax to revive the finish on everything. But first, I'm going to put these arms on and get the chair assembled 100%. I'm going to glue this on with hide glue. So there's two dowels here and it's being held on by a screw here and here. It doesn't really need a screw here, but back here it does. Now, if you've watched a number of my videos, you hear me talk about not putting screws in chairs. There's a battle that happens with metal and wood. And when that battle happens, the metal always wins. So in a chair, there's a ton of movement of people sitting on them, a live load, and putting a screw in any sp spots that are holding a structural load under, anywhere under here it's just going to cause issues where the joints are going to wear out the screws are going to hold things in place it's not a good scene so this is the only spot where i would say you'd see screws and that's holding in a difficult joint that needs to take some stress so i'll just finish gluing it up here we'll put it on and it's very typical in situations like this where you've also got a screw cap at the back. And the reason that's done is because you want to be able to access that screw. You don't want to put a cap on and cut it flush and never be able to get open. Uh, there are some chairs that are like that, but most of them are not. So the function of that is pull the cap off, tighten up the screw, and then you've got a tightened up arm again. And when you're putting those caps on, some people I've seen just fully load up the joint um, with the screw cap. And unfortunately, what that means is for the next person that has to take it off, you end up splitting out the cap rather than pulling it out one piece. So all you need is a little dab of glue when you're putting that cap on. So a little bit more glue right here, and we're ready to put this together. Oh, and I'll put a little bit here as well. There isn't a lot of holding power with end grain, gluing end grain on like this, but I like to do it just to add a little bit more snugness there. Help keep it together. Okay, so that's in. There's one screw here on the bottom. Yeah, that's good and tight. And then one screw up here. So put the screw cap, just a little dab of glue at the top, a little dab of glue at the bottom, and then put in place. When I'm putting on a cap, what I want to do is make sure I line it up so it's not noticeable that this was taken off. It's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle sometimes, but if you keep rotating it around, you'll eventually find a spot where a little piece of wood or a little piece of finish lines up and matches well. And then it's just a matter of adding those two dabs of glue so you can put this back on and allow someone to repair it in the future.
The last step in the assembly is trimming off the wedges underneath the chair seat. So to clean this off, I'm using one drop of dish soap in this water. It just adds a little bit of degreasing to it, and it's the most mild application of a cleaner you can apply. I'm going to rub this down and see if that cleans it off at all. No, it's not coming off. So this must be the poor job someone did stripping this. There's only one other thing I can try, and that's mineral spirits to see what it will do. But you can see here's some good color. That's just not washing off at all. It's quite a difference between these two. So let me try that. not doing it either. So that's unfortunate. These chair legs are going to look a little bit different. But uh, the only way to deal with this is to strip these legs down and that goes beyond the scope of this project. So the best I can do is just wash everything down and uh, oh actually I wonder If I could put another coat of stain on top of this, I wonder if that would work. I'm going to wipe this down, get it all cleaned off. Maybe we can give that a try. It might just revive that finish a bit. So putting stain on here seems to help a little bit. I'm not sure if it's going to solve the whole problem. One step closer, we'll see how it works. I noticed as I was cleaning this off, there is a little bit of a rock to this chair. So I need to fix that first before I put the wax on it. So I'll turn this upside down. So down here, there are four feet, there are metal feet on here. And what I'm going to do is just adjust the feet. Rather than cutting off one leg, these little metal feet, they tend to get embedded in the wood. So I'm gonna pull one up and prop one out just a little bit further than the rest. I've got a small piece of walnut here left over from a turning and I'm just going to insert that under the cap here and then hammer it back down again. So stand it back up and just check that we got it right. Not quite. So it's still off a little bit. So I'm gonna to have to do that to the opposite leg as well. And then we'll have it level. Normally when I put all this weight down here and clamp everything up, these are all level. But obviously that didn't work this time around. So we just have to make do with what we've got. I'll turn it right side up. And there we go, perfect. So the last part to do here is put on this Howard's Feed and Wax. This has got orange oil and beeswax, and you put it on for about 20 minutes and then wipe it down, and it gives it a nice rich look like this chair here. It's really fun to put on.
Well, these two chairs have come a long way since being brought into the shop as chewed up dog toys. I hope you've enjoyed this video series. Please leave a comment for me. I'd love to read your comments and hear what your thoughts are. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, click over here and click on the bell icon and you get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <laughs>